My dad heard that one of our neighbors was selling a really nice used dual spinner fertilizer bin. And after we took a look at it, we realized it would be a big step up from what we're using now and went ahead and bought it. Our old buggy has just a single spinner, which doesn't do the best job as far as getting even coverage uh, across the throw. Something definitely needed to be done. This machine was getting really tired. Fertilizer is very corrosive and there wasn't much left of the frame in the rear. The engine was also approaching the end of its life. The old buggy had served us well and we had covered many acres with it, but it was time to put it out to pasture. The neighbor was also selling the cab that went with it and we bought that too. I started getting really excited at the thought of sitting inside the enclosed cab with the AC on instead of breathing dust and exhaust fumes like I am with our current setup. But to get set up with the new bin and cab, you're basically going to be building a whole new buggy. We thought we could reuse the front end that I built a couple years ago, and the rear end and tires were in good shape as well. But other than that, we'd be starting from scratch. Daniel and I jumped in on ripping the old one apart. We wanted to see if we could get most of it done in a day. Got it. We figured it was going to come apart a little faster than it was going to go back together. We thought we might as well save our old bin. Not sure what we would use it for, but it might be nice to have for something down the road. Most fertilizer bins are made from stainless steel, which holds up against the corrosive fertilizer, unlike the mild steel frame of the buggy underneath it. After getting the bin off, we saw just how bad the frame was. Daniel could tap through the side walls with a hammer. And that was quarter inch material originally. It's kind of scary we were putting 6,000 pounds of fertilizer in this thing at times. Not quite sure what was holding it together. We kept cutting, keeping what we could reuse, and getting everything else torn apart and ready to be hauled off to the scrapyard. What? Oh, we still set? We weren't quite sure what we were going to do with the old engine. It's always the same dilemma of whether it's worth reusing. When you know it's going to take a lot of work and maintenance to keep running. We just about succeeded on knocking the teardown out in a single day. All that was left the next morning was to cut loose the rear end trying really hard not to puncture the very expensive flotation tires in the process and remove the frame. Well, at this point, we realized we were definitely going forward with the project. No turning back now. Fast forwarding about a year, we had a new frame built with the fresh coat of paint on it and everything was ready to go back together. I had spent the last week painting on this thing and I told the guys I was going to set a jar on the workbench and every time someone chipped the paint it was going to be five bucks. I decided not to in the end because I figured I would probably be putting in the most money out of everyone. Five bucks. <laughs> this project was a real team effort for our farm and I was just a small part of it. Like I said, my dad was the one that found the bin and cab and had the initial idea for the project. I fabricated the new frame and figured out how all the pieces were going to fit together. Daniel took charge on the engine and drive chain. Then this last summer, when we started getting busy on the farm, we had a neighbor named Mike, who's mostly retired now, but still likes to do some part-time shop work, work on the buggy a lot, 
wrapping up all the loose ends that we were having trouble finding time to get to. And Dan even jumped in from time to time when we needed an extra hand. Yeah, on our small farm, we have both a Daniel and a Dan. It gets confusing. We found a passenger van destined for the scrapyard with a decent Chevy 350 with low miles on it. We figured it should be enough power for what we were doing and parts for it would be cheap and easy to get. Going this route would save us quite a bit of money over a new crate engine. Daniel went through the whole engine making sure everything was up to spec. He also converted it over to an electronic ignition and built a whole circuit board from scratch to run it, which just really blew me away. It was really nice getting to buy the cab with the bin, since it was on a fertilizer spreader before and had a lot of the components needed already. It had an air ride seat, which was going to be a huge improvement to the old setup, which was a hard seat bolted to the top of the fuel tank. It was a very rough ride on the older grass fields, especially with the big bouncy flotation tires. The new bin uses a GPS guidance computer to control the speed of the feed chain, slowing it down and speeding it up as your speed changes out in the field, which means you'll be putting on the same amount regardless of how fast you're going. I was so excited about this. With our old buggy, you needed to try and maintain a specific speed in order for your rate to be somewhat close, which is hard to do at the ends of the field or when you're doing the perimeter. Daniel started working on hooking up all the engine components while Dan and I bolted down the UHMW I had cut for the fenders. I thought the plastic would work well for the fenders because it won't rust out like the metal fenders did on the old buggy. We also used stainless bolts whenever we could. Next, the Dans worked on getting the exhaust bolted back on, and I worked on installing the fuel tank, which we actually bought from a marine supply shop since it was quite a bit cheaper than the other options we were looking at. Drake pulled a vacuum on the AC and recharged the system. The cab also came with a really nice stainless step, which we were excited to be able to make work. I got that bolted back on the brackets I made that supported it and the fuel tank underneath it. Dan plumbed in the hydraulic oil cooler and tank. He also contributed $5 to the paint chip jar. These fertilizer bins are made by a guy out here in Oregon and they have a really good reputation for being high quality and accurate. He spends half his time farming and half his time fabricating, which I think is why his equipment is so good, because you know he's using it all the time and is always looking for ways to keep improving it. I've always thought that farmers have some really valuable and practical design skills that you get from spending so many hours operating the equipment. And they might have some ideas of how something should work that engineers not in the field, the literal field, wouldn't. I got to visit his shop about 10 years ago when he was building a new buggy for a neighbor and it was really inspiring for me to see what can be built in a simple farm shop. I think it was a big part of what started me down the path of setting up my own shop to build as much of the equipment as I could for our own farm. You can really save a lot of money if you're willing to build your own equipment and in some cases build something better than what's currently available out there for the application you are needing. There is a serial number stamped in the bin denoting that this is the ninth bin he built. I think he's up over a couple hundred now and you see them all up and down the Willamette Valley. Even more than my precious air conditioning and air ride seat, 
The real value of the cab was it coming already plumbed and set up with electronic hydraulic controls and butterfly valves. That was huge. But the seat is a nice perk too. The hood that came with the cab was a little short, but we still decided it would be fine to use. We've got a nice tall air breather. And the best part of this whole project is that I could still use the original grill I made. I don't think we'll be able to call the buggy White Lightning anymore, since it's black and yellow now. Maybe the buggy will be like that wizard in the Lord of the Rings movie and return from death as a different color. Maybe it'll be black and yellow lightning now. I could see that working. After a year in the shop, we were getting really close to finishing this thing up. Daniel had a couple things left to finish up on the engine. We reattached the roof of the cab, which we had given a new paint job as well. There were a couple more $5 contributions to be made after getting it bolted down. From the seat of the cab, you really can't see into the bin behind you at all which means it would be really hard to monitor how much fertilizer you had left and know when you are about to run out. I installed a backup camera on the roof, which worked great, and installed the monitor where it was going to be easy to glance at while driving. Well, I think it's that time. Let's get this thing out of the shop and see how it drives out in the field. Like every piece of shop built equipment. There's a couple little things to tweak, some leaks to stop, and a bit of fine tuning needed. But I couldn't have been happier with how the buggy drove. It had plenty of power, it felt nice and tight, and tracked well. The GPS and brake controller were just amazing, coming from what we had before. It was always a guessing game on our old buggy of where to set the rate. With the new controller and bin now maintaining a constant number of chain revolutions per acre, you just set the gate opening in the back based on fertilizer density and the pounds per acre you want, and go for it. After some testing, I could see it was dead on. We think the new buggy will bait for itself pretty quickly, with fertilizer being so expensive, and how important and accurate and even application is for a crop's yields. The dual spinners on the spin are gonna do such a better job at evenly throwing the fertilizer than our old single spinner setup. Plus, I have my air ride seat in AC. Again, I can't reiterate enough how much of a team effort this project was here on our farm. We've got some great guys that were really willing to work hard on this project which is what made it possible. Big thanks to Mike, who I feel bad didn't make the video because when he was working on it last summer, I was out in the field farming. Thanks to Daniel for the amazing work on the engine. Dan for being always willing to jump in and give us a hand when we needed it. My dad for getting the ball rolling and being patient with us while the puggy was in the shop for a lot longer than we initially thought it would be. And thanks to Drake for charging the AC.
a lot of what we do on a farm is solitary work. So it's always great when you get to jump in and work on a project together with some hardworking, great guys.